thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, this should be a pretty fun conversation that we're going to have. Um, and just to reiterate what our objective is for today, um, we're going to be learning the intricacies of creating style guides and color palettes, uh, opening a storefront, and working with the t-shirt company. Uh, we'll be joined by library staff from Mount Prospect, Lincolnwood, Schaumburg, and Rock Island, um, who have successfully implemented these things at their libraries and now want to show how you can too at yours. If you have any questions throughout, raise your hand, uh, your virtual hand, uh, or your physical one, I guess, if, you're, if your camera's on, um, or pop your question into the chat and we'll do our best to monitor it and answer it either in the moment or at the end when it may be uh, more, a little bit uh, more applicable. But before we do that, uh, Emmy and I want to formally announce a change to our annual mini conference format. Instead of doing a one day, day long in-person or virtual mini conference, uh, we'll be doing some hybrid events throughout the year featuring lectures and presentations from industry and uh, library marketing experts alike. So these will be ticketed events um, and we hope to host and broadcast them from around the state. Uh, we know that maintaining a virtual presence of some sort is super duper important for connecting with everybody around the state, um, either from a COVID precaution standpoint or simply from a geographic standpoint. Um, Roundtables like this one today will stay fully virtual for the foreseeable future. It's just easier to have a, a dialogue, a conversation back and forth when everybody is in the same format, whether they're in person or virtual. And again, for that accessibility, it's going to be virtual for now. Uh, but that leads us into who will be our first presenter for our first hybrid meeting, which will be in January. Uh, it's a company called Simple Truth. They're a local branding agency that helped uh, craft the Mount Prospect Public Library Style Guide that Emmy's going to talk about here in a moment. Um, so Emmy, I am officially turning it over to you. Thank you, Chris. Um, and I am going to keep my part fairly short. I am recovering from the flu and um, we'll see how long my voice holds out today. So please bear with me and the possible cough that will interrupt this conversation. I'm gonna try not to laugh because that makes things worse for me. Um, and I was gonna kick this off because like Chris said, Simple Truth is a local Chicago-based um, creative branding agency who worked with Mount Prospect to create our style guide, update our logo, and create some basic templates for us. It was actually not on staff at Mount Prospect when the initial work with Simple Truth started. I was hoping that Jennifer Amling, who is actually our head of marketing at Mount Prospect, um, would be able to join us, but she was unavailable today. Um, but I'm going to share, I have worked with Simple Truth since we rolled out the initial brand. So I'm going to share a little bit about that. And I can actually go ahead and drop our very comprehensive style guide into the chat, I think, if you give me a second. Um, but it is also available on the ILA Marketing Forum Google Drive, which is a good reminder to everybody that that exists. Um, we're still working on reorganizing it a little bit. Um, but one of the key differences, I think, for many libraries is that we did hire an outside company to work with us to do this. Um, and it was a really positive experience. Chris, you introduced this as who had successfully implemented a style guide and rebrand. Ours is still very much a work in progress. Um, the style guide itself turned out beautifully, but we are still taking that style guide and translating it to the work that we actually do in-house now. Um, I do have a very, very minimal um, presentation that I'm going to go ahead and share that can kind of show you some of the basic things. And let me actually drop the Simple Truth website um, in here, just so that if anybody's interested. We were one of the first libraries that Simple Truth worked with. Um, they have worked with other nonprofit organizations and um, the Chicago History Museum is one of their clients. Just give me a second here. I'll start there. And I'm, so that everybody who's interested can take a look there. And then, um, you know what, can I ask, I'm having trouble getting our style guide to share in the chat. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. So give me a minute um, to figure that out, but let me share this presentation part. 
All right, I'm going to keep talking now, but I will um, say that one of the reasons that we hired an outside company is that we had not had a, we've gone through since the library's founding in 1943, we've only had two logos. Um, and we started with one in 1943, and there were a small tweaks made to it in 2005, um, but they were really, really minimal tweaks, and we needed a new logo. And when we started talking about needing a new logo, we realized that we had zero guidelines around any of our creative content. Um, there were no standard fonts. There were no standard graphic formats. Um, our lead designer is self-trained. She has a ton of wisdom. She's been at the library for a long time. Um, but we really didn't feel that we had somebody in-house who could create this comprehensive branding overhaul that we needed. Um, I know a lot of libraries probably aren't in the position financially to work with an outside branding agency, but I will say it is surprisingly more affordable than you think. So if you don't have staff time, um, it is something to consider. Um, it's definitely not like tens of thousands of dollars by any means. Um, you can find basic work, you know, for under $6,000. We did have a really comprehensive package, but I think it is worth noting in general that it is more affordable sometimes than you think, um, especially when you think about staff time, if you are small or if you don't feel that you have somebody in house who can help you um, create what you need. Um, we also struggled a lot with accessible design, um, and we wanted to have somebody with experience in creating accessible design and guiding staff. I am having a lot of technical issues. I cannot share our style guide or my PowerPoint, um, and since this is about graphic design, this is throwing me off. Um, I want to at least give you a general sense of the style guide. And share the presentation with me and I can kind of try to share it on my end. Okay, let's do that. Um, give me one second, everybody, and I will do that. Okay, hold on, Chris. So I'm going to keep trying to talk while I'm also trying to share. Um, like I was talking about accessibility and our color palette, as hopefully you will see in just a minute. Um, I'm just actually going to just share this way, and I think that'll be easier. Um, that we were able to work with designers who could tell us about Um, what colors we should use for our text, what colors we should use for our font, um, what we what would look best on digital screen. They were able to help us with all those web digital <laughs> accessibility standards. Um, hold on, one second. I'm going to take a second so that I'm not trying to talk while trying to do this and get this to you, Chris. So well, while Emmy's doing that, I'm going to take the moment to um, actually go through our new website because um, <clears throat> it has a little bit to, it kind of forced us to, to create a style guide and we have a very, very tiny one here. Um, but I can show you how those colors were sort of implemented um, on our new website. So let me pull that up and then I will see if I can share that on my end. Desktop two should be fine. Uh, Now I need to freaking enable something. Okay. Can you see my library's website? Yes. Okay, I'm seeing nodding. That's great. Okay, we got one thing to work. Cool. <laughs> um, all right. So 
this is our new website. It launched in October. Um, so we're still kind of working through a couple of bugs with it. Um, Library Market was the one who created it. So if you have, um, uh, if you're familiar with their company, it kind of looks very similar to uh, Palatine's Morton Groves. Uh, it's all the same company who did this. Uh, and with this, we created our, we had to create this little style guide to be able to give them. Um, and I'm going to open that up now too, just to show sort of how these colors are implemented in different places. Let me see if I can drag this over. Okay. So can you see the color palette now too? Yes. Awesome. So these colors were first chosen by our staff members here, and then they were actually given to Library Market. And Library Market said, some of these colors will work on the web, some of them won't. And so that's a super important thing to think about when you're crafting these colors is what is going to be actually accessible for people. Um, colors that are too light can't be used dominantly on a website because they just can't be viewed by people with different vision capabilities. Um, and so we had to, I think this yellow may have actually been a little bit lighter and we had to darken it just to make sure that it was meeting those accessibility standards. Um, and then we've also got different iterations as to how we're using that here. Um, those colors for us really sort of dominate different hover things, uh, and they're really super duper prevalent on our calendar page as well. Uh, let's see, because they indicate the different uh, age groups for stuff. I'm just going to turn off all the room reservations. We don't have to look at all that stuff. Um, but our yellow is used for our, our youngest library visitors, or that teal color is sort of for the kids in between, and then we've got our teens and tweens and our adults. And so we've been able to carry this through now with the website being sort of our driving force for this. Um, we also have some assets that we print out in-house, like program calendars and all of that, and we're continuing these color iterations to really drive in that if you're looking for something for your, your baby toddler or preschool or look for something that's in yellow or has sort of a yellow um, indication with it to, to drive home that it's for, for that age group. And it hovers over there too. Um, is the, Emmy? Are you good, or do you want me to keep talking? Um, I this is actually really great to see, but I'm going to improvise. The issue is PowerPoint; it's unresponsive, and instead of logging off, I'm just basically going to do what you did. I'll share my screen and not worry about sharing the PowerPoint itself. Um, I have the style guide pulled up in a different window, so that is how. I will go from now, but feel free to finish talking about the site. I don't mean to cut you off at all. Um, no, no, no. I think um, that's that's really all that I wanted to say about it for the most part. Um, okay. All of these graphics were done by by Kelly and House here to get us started, which look wonderful. And, and again, kind of lend themselves to that color palette and, uh, and, and mirror that as best that they can. Um, before I turn it back over to Emmy, though, does anybody have any questions about this? I mean, we could we could talk all the time about library websites and and all of that kind of stuff, but um, I mean, look at the chat to make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, and Library Market did Rock Islands as well. Rock Islands website, Helen Blum's websites, um, both iterations of Helen Blum's, uh, which look awesome. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to turn it back over to okay. Emmy. And I will share my screen in a second. I will say that we are using web links um, right now, and I am all over the place. Um, I'm going to change this chat. We're using web links, who I also think did Indian Trails and another uh, number of other libraries. Um, our website design is not complete, but actually in the PowerPoint that I originally planned to share, I showed how our new brand guidelines impacted that the new site, which is not live yet. So you can only see our old site. Um, Sadly, I cannot share a side by side of those two because I cannot get PowerPoint to respond. Um, but it is really pretty amazing. And that is one of the things a style guide can do. It doesn't just drive your in house graphics, it can really be used for everything. And that is so important. I am so happy that we had a style guide prior to moving in our into our website redesign because um, they were able to inform each other a lot. And our in-house marketing and creative team isn't wasn't heavily involved in the initial conversations about website design. So being able to send that style guide to our IT supervisor was so helpful. Um, so just saying that because for anyone on here who doesn't currently have a style guide, and maybe that's nobody, um, that is one of the big pluses. Okay, so moving on. Now I am going to share my screen. I am just going to drag our some of our style guide 
on so that you can see some of the things I was talking about color as we all know. Okay, here we go. Can everybody now see parts of my style guide at least? Might not be in a slide deck, but that's okay. Um, so we were able to talk in depth about color and what color to use um, when we are creating digital and print materials. And this is not something our design team had talked about prior to having this style guide. So this was really important to us. Um, and there are all sorts of tools you can use without working with an outside company um, to make sure that everything is accessible, especially online. Um, but it was great to have our staff and our team hear this um, from a professional branding company. Um, since I have this pulled up, I'm also going to say that one of the nice things about working with an outside company is that we did talk about things like personality a lot. Um, and having an outside company come in meant that they hosted workshops with the entire library staff. Um, I am not going to say too much about that because I'm hoping Simple Truth will share more about that and how libraries who don't hire an outside company can take some of that with them. Um, because I know it can be hard to find time to get all staff to weigh in, but it definitely meant that even if we're struggling in-house to implement some of the brand, um, staff were all on board and so excited about this rebrand process. Um, and those workshops were really inspiring, I think, for everybody. And we were kind of able to come up with this personality piece of our style guide. Um, which has been really great to go back to for many different things. Um, there is that. I am really bummed that I cannot show you how we took this style guide and passed it on to our new website. Um, if anyone's familiar with our current website, it can definitely use some updating. And I'm trying to think if there's any way I can show you this side by side easily. Um, if I don't have it dropped into Illustrator right now. I guess there is not. Um, so let's see. Let me go back here. Um, so I guess I want to give everybody a chance right now because I know my voice will fail soon to ask me any questions about working with an outside company. Um, if anybody has any specific to that. Um, otherwise, our style guide is pretty basic. I know Kelly from Lincolnwood is going to talk a little bit more about creating in-house style guides. Hollis, I know at Schaumburg, you also have an in-house style guide. Um, just kind of flipping through this so you can see it is a 36-page document. Um, so ours is very comprehensive. But does anyone have any questions about working with an outside company? So that's kind of what makes what our library did, I think, a little bit different than anybody else here. And let me check the chat too. So budget-wise, I had hoped, I said that Jennifer Amling would be here to share more about that because I wasn't part of the initial budget conversations and I haven't been able to get a clear answer. So I don't want to give incorrect information, but we put out an RFP and um we did have a budget range in mind um, when we went into this. I don't want to throw out numbers right now because they are not concrete and I can't be sure because it wasn't on staff, um, but we definitely did. And we interviewed three different firms. And I think it surprised everyone at first that we went with a company who hadn't done public library work before. Um, but I actually think that had some value to it um, for sure. From start to completion, well, it's not completed yet because we are still trying to make sure that we get that brand out. But um, their actual work was just a few months. We have done a few reviews with them after and added a few things to help our design team out, um, like additional templates. So I'm trying to think. Once they started working, we did two workshops two more meetings. I mean, it was like three months and it could have been less. I think so. Um, those all came out of the workshop, essentially. There was some guidance, of course, from our library director, who was fairly new at the time. Um, but 
And Simple Truth came to those workshops with the type of questions ready to get that information. Um, and that is sort of like, that was a really fun part. I joined staff when they were wrapping this up and short sort of sharing everything that came out of the workshops. Um, but those questions and those workshops were just a really great way to get staff buy-in and help us understand what our library was and where we wanted to go. Um, let's see, are there any other questions? Like I said, I'm really excited to have Simple Truth come share. And while they won't focus so much on like the creation of a style guide, because we want it to be creative and inspirational for everyone, they definitely intend to have something for every library to take away um, from that, from their presentation in January. And I'm sorry for my voice and for failing to show you my slide deck, which would be very helpful in showing the implementation of this. But if nobody else has questions, I might pass it on to you, Kelly. I mean, can you stop sharing your screen so Kelly can, uh, do you wanna share your, your do you want me to? Yeah, maybe it'll be easier okay. if I do it. Oh. Okay, she's still sharing her screen. So um, I am unsharing my screen. So, okay. so. Yeah, and I don't know if you can make it so I can share my screen. Yeah, but as soon as I see this to stop, okay. it should be. Okay. Okay. Um, is my screen being shared? Maybe share screen button. Um, yes. Uh, oh, I'm some preferences. Um, okay. All right. And then maybe if you can go to the one that has the, um, like the glasses and like the, the one the yes, yeah, go there first. Like, I can, like, if you can go, um, Actually, can you go out of that one to the, sorry, Chris is, Chris is driving for me. So I'm trying to like direct him to where to go. Um, uh, yeah, go there and then go to the one with the eyeglasses and the, yeah. Okay, so um, I am the, currently the head of marketing at Lincolnwood Public Library, but this is actually, um, I'm new in this position. So what I'm showing you is what I did as the uh, creative services manager at the Displains Public Library. Um, I don't know if you can scroll down to where the old logo is. Um, so when I came in, this was in 2013, um, the library had, you can see at the top, it's what the original logo was when the library was first built. Um, the second logo down is what the logo looked like when I came in. And um, they wanted something a little bit different, uh, but they still wanted it to feel, kind of look and feel the same. So it wasn't too drastic. They didn't want to um, go with something completely different. Um, so I'm actually coming from kind of a different background. I'm not from a library background. I'm from a design background. So I had done a lot of freelancing, um, magazine work, all, all sorts of different kinds of things. So I sort of had that, graphic design foundation doing a lot of like brand identity and stuff. So I took a lot of the feedback that the library had and put that into creating a new logo. I had shown them a bunch of different versions that were, um, you know, very different. And in the end, they wanted something that was just kind of the same so that it didn't feel too much of a departure. Um, so I basically took that the old logo and tried to kind of clean it up and pare it down. And um, we went through different types of colors and things like that. So, and if you scroll down some more. So then I also created like a single color version as well that could be used um, in different things as well, um, just to give options. Um, so once I had kind of created a new brand for the library, we then went and, um, talked about a style guide. Uh, oh, and so then the other last thing that I did too, and you can, I think you can click on that and, oh, um, oh I saw it very large. 
So the other thing that I did is I took sort of that, like an outline of the design and I created these different patterns um, that could be used as like backgrounds for different things. Um, and so they're in like very subtle places on the website. They can be used um, on business cards, it, just in different places. So it was just sort of having that um, sort of design element that could kind of tie into different things. So that was sort of how we started. Um, okay, so then what I did is I created a style guide that was something that went um, out to all the staff. And so I took the logo and kind of showed different versions. So I have like a horizontal version and then a stacked version, um, because as you know, you know, different places you'll need different formats. You'll need something that's longer. You might need something that's more square, um, something that's multicolored versus something that's single color. So I wanted to have all those different options. So the first thing to do is show, show those options in a style guide um, so that people can see that it's not just one version of the logo. Um, so then we talked about um, sort of our, uh, you know, profile and what the library stood for and what our sort of brand personality was. And these were things that the library already had um, crafted. So it was generosity, good design, friendliness, and efficiency. So I wanted to use that sort of moving forward um, in the design, but also kind of to remind staff, because this brand, the style guide was something that all staff had access to and all had copies of um, so that they could use. Um, so this is kind of tiny, hard to see. I can send you guys a link. Um, I'll put a link in the chat in a little bit so you can look at this on your own computer. Um, so basically, I, you know, it's a very common thing in style guides where you sort of indicate how the logo can be used, um, that, you know, it shouldn't be smaller than a certain size. Um, and that's also a, an important thing to know when you are creating a logo or when you hire someone to create a logo, that it needs to look good at a large size, but it also needs to look good when it's really tiny um, on the bottom of a flyer or on a business card or you know whatever the situation is, it needs to be able to reproduce at different scales. Um, and then another thing is just making sure people understand if they're using the logo, if staff are using the logo on something that it needs to have space around it that sort of like gives the logo some room to breathe. So that's sort of an important thing just to remind people. Um, okay, so we also talked about fonts and um, we wanted something that was a very clean, simple font. So we used a Futura number two. Um, we also, the staff, um, some of the staff felt very strongly about have a, having a serif font as well. So we had selected a serif font that sort of complemented it that could be used in different form formats as well. And not to say that those were the only fonts that people could ever use, but just in terms of like marketing or branding, it was sort of like the predominant font that we used. Um, okay, so then we went to the color palette. Now, this is gonna look like a lot. And um, there are three main colors that we use, but we also wanted to have a color palette for both youth, teen, and adult. Um, and it was not necessarily to say that these are the only colors that you can use, but it was to give uh, each of those departments sort of a nice range of colors that they could kind of pull from if they were looking for things for um, you know something that they were making. Uh, so, we worked on some colors for teens and, you know, had sort of a nice like rain, or I'm sorry, for youth and had kind of like a nice rainbow look. We had some darker ones, some lighter ones, some more pastel ones. Um, so these were sort of just like the basic youth colors that we had. Um, so here you'll see actually at the top, those three um, sort of like a blue, a teal and a green are kind of like our core colors. And then our neutrals were sort of like warm grays. Um, that we used. So that was sort of the main colors that, you know, are used in the website and things. And then we had the youth palette. And then this is sort of like an extended palette that was more for the adults. It was a lot of similar colors, but sort of a more sophisticated or more mature version of them. Um, 
you know, that like a more subdued shades in some areas, um, just to kind of give it a more grown up feel. And then we also had our teen palette, which actually sort of combined some of the youth colors and some of the adult colors to kind of work together. So, and then the other thing that these colors are very helpful for was several years later, we ended up doing a, a giant renovation on the library. And we actually referenced these colors. This style palette went to the architect and I actually was involved in a lot of the meetings with the architect. And we referenced a lot of these colors when redesigning the library. So um, like that sort of, uh, sort of, blue in the top right corner, some of those greens, like they were used um, for furniture, they were used for wall colors, things like that. So it was nice having, you know, kind of some certain shades selected that had a, a certain kind of mood to them that, that we could use. Uh, and then just here is, you know, another thing, if you're creating a style guide, you know, you want to have, you know, the logo, the typography, the colors, but then also showing the fonts being used at different weights. So you've got, you know, a thin, thinner version, a bold and italic, uh, you know, having um, people see how those will look kind of gives them a sense of, you know, I can use this for a headline, I can use this for, um, you know, the body of text. Uh, it's just, it's just a nice thing to visually have for staff to see. Um, the other thing was photography. Um, now, the way things were working at our library, uh, we designed everything. Staff did not design anything on their own, but it was still important for them to know what our style guide was and what our brand identity was. Um, because a lot of times we would take requests from them and they would send us images that they wanted us to use. Uh, and so the first thing that we did was, um, previously there had been a lot of stock photography that was used that had that sort of stock photo look, very sort of staged. Um, and we wanted to avoid avoid that. We wanted to go for a much more editorial style. So I wanted people to see the, the types of photos we were avoiding. Um, and then I shared with them sort of more of the types of photos that we wanted to use. Oh, um, so Chris asked me a question, uh, wanted to know about purchasing those fonts. So yes, those particular, the Constantino one, the Serif one, we did not purchase. I think that was an available one. The um, the main font that we did use was one that was purchased. Um, and it was one that we were able to get like a license for everybody in the library to use. Um, it wasn't that expensive. Uh, so I, I think investing, you know, a hundred bucks or 200 bucks in a really nice font is, is worth it. So, um, so then we moved on to the type of photography that we did want to incorporate. Um, it was a very sort of lifestyle editorial look. Think about something that would be in a magazine, um, good lighting that looked, uh, you know, more candid. Uh, I think it just has a much more natural feel to it. Um, so then we just talked about, um, this was just how the style guide was applied to things in the building and how, uh, you know, talking about our core values and using these design elements everywhere in the space that it wasn't just, you know, on the website, it wasn't just on, you know, a poster that it was sort of the aesthetics of the building. So then, um, right before I left the library, um, one of the big projects we did was a um, sign era, like a wayfair, way, uh, excuse me, a wayfinding project where we um, redid all the signage in the building. And so I was involved with sort of helping to design that signage and kind of looking at our style guide and thinking about the fonts and the sort of very clear, clean lines that everything had uh, that we were able to use that for the signage as well. Um, yeah, and then, oh, I don't know if you want to go to the website too. So, and then the last thing is we did do a website redesign as well. And so these were sort of some mock-ups that we had done originally. Um, and, you know, again, we were using the color guide, we were using the patterns, um, 
So it was nice to have that. We didn't, uh, we worked with a design company. I don't know the name off the top of my head, um, but we sort of handed them the style guide and you know, said, this is the look we sort of want. Um, and I gave them some mock-ups of what I felt would look good. And then they um, kind of designed, did all the coding and everything. And it looked, in in the end, it looked very similar to, to what you see here. So, um, but yeah, having that style guide was very helpful. So, and I'll put the link in the chat too. So if you want to look at this on your own, you can. So I don't know if anybody has any questions for me. Or, or not? I'll just throw this out there if nobody has any questions that um, what you said about logo formats and sizes is really important if there's anybody on here in the process of creating a style guide. Um, we actually only received one logo, I believe, from Simple Truth. And um, at that time, then we felt like we had the in-house team to sort of reformat those, but it's really important because your logo will be used in so many different ways, stacked, horizontal, vertical. Um, so if you do hire somebody out, you can either make sure you note that upfront or know that you have somebody in-house who can do that because not everything you create is gonna be a one size fits all for the logo that you have. Yeah, and I would also say, just having talked to other people and having designed logos for other people in my freelance days, um, make sure that if you hire somebody that you get copies of that logo in various formats. Don't just have them send you a JPEG of that logo. You want to make sure um, a good designer will actually give you like a full range of all the logos. So the first thing I did is I created a folder. I had full color versions. I had black and white versions. Um, I had sort of a reversed black and white version. Um, and in those, I had a JPEG, I had a PNG, I had a PDF, and I also included the vector version of those. The vector version is probably the most important thing to make sure you have access to, um, because that's the one version that you can scale up and scale down, and it doesn't affect the quality, like, uh, you know, whereas other things get pixelated. Um, so you want to make sure that you do have access to that um, version and that that a good designer will give you all of that so just you know just important to remind to ask for that remember to ask cool okay um i know i'm still talking to kelly's computer and that's totally fine okay um but this is chris if my face isn't popping up uh i'm going to turn it over to hollis just in the interest of time but if you have any questions for kelly or for emmy drop them in the chat and we can answer them um toward the end but hollis i'm going to turn it over officially to you Chris, um, I'll hopefully this will work. I'm putting a OneDrive link to our share or our uh, style guide in the chat. I can try to share my screen too because I do have it up and that might be easier. Um, I don't think I have a lot to add, so I'll keep it as brief as I can here. Did that work? Hopefully. Yep. Okay. Um, Yep, so I think similar to stories from Kelly and Emmy, we had a different logo. Uh, that was not working for us. Our previous logo when I started actually uh, was very much based on the architecture of our building, which is backwards <laughs> in my opinion and in the opinion of the new administration. So um, that was actually one of the first things I was tasked with when I started as the marketing director at Schomburg was to do a whole brand refresh for us. Um, and then also similar to I think Cal what Kelly said, um, when we were working with the freelance designer on new logos, we had all these beautiful options and our board was kind of like, no, we want to keep it similar. So it ended up just being a simplified version of what it was before. Um, but as far as we're concerned in the marketing team, it's a lot easier to use. It's a lot cleaner. Um, we like the emphasis on the words Schomburg and library because um, we've got one of those really long names that you have to try to grapple with. So um, I'll just flip through a couple pages real quickly here. Um, so for us, it was really important to show acceptable versus unacceptable things for our logo. So, well, for all of our style. So you'll see, you know, don't squish it, don't stretch it, but also like we don't change ours. We don't stack it. We don't change out the font. It's always the same way. Um, and then also like we have acceptable color usage within our logo. So that's outlined here too. Um, and then again, similar to what Kelly and Emmy shared, we've got our color palette um, and then some different guidelines on when and where to use those specific colors. And then even further, this was actually an addition after the fact to our style guide of acceptable and unacceptable color combinations. 
you would think those ones at the bottom would be obvious because they are unreadable, but no, um, our, our in-house uh, graphic design team is very much self-taught and I think similar to I Emmy, mean, they're wonderful. They have great uh, historical knowledge of our organization, but not 100% great design instincts. So I really needed to spell it out after some time of seeing that they, they were getting bored with the color options that we had available and they were trying to be creative. And I said, no guys, it can't, it can't be red. It needs to be red. That's the most important. It needs to be accessible. Um, and then we did alter our colors a little bit for our website as well. Again, like everybody else has said, accessibility is the key there. So we did um, uh, darken things a touch from what our three primary colors are. And that's what, uh, that's what we did. Um, and I see a question in the chat. Who did you work with to determine ADA compliant colors? So I'll have to dig for this, but we actually found documentation from the ADA about the contrast levels between colors. And um, I, again, I don't want to misstate that, but um, we did find documentation from them about that exact piece of information, which was really helpful, um, especially in working with seniors to make sure things are easy for them to read. So I, I'll look for that and I'll send it back around to the group after the fact. Um, and then again, our font options, and then uh, similar to what Kelly said, the font options in the different weights. And then we um, gave an example of our guide and how the fonts are used within the guide, which was really helpful. We probably need to update this page because we um, had to change our guide since we first created this, but it's helpful again, this is a headline, this is a different kind of headline, this is, a, this is the text. Um, and then uh, again, similar to Kelly, we have acceptable and unacceptable imagery. We um, pretty much, I would say 98% of the time, if we're using we use photos and those photos are of patrons in our spaces, um, we really are not using stock photos anymore. It's really all just our library patrons. Um, if we do, we do not have an illustrator on staff. So if we need to pur purchase a stock image or graphic, um, we kind of go for a style for that too, where we want it to look more like an illustration and hand drawn with an outline um, and not something that's attempting to be photo realistic. Um, and then more just notes on style, acceptable versus unacceptable on um, shadows, outlining, gradients. Again, these things might seem obvious, but uh, for my staff, this needed to be laid out very clearly to say yes and no on these things. Um, and they found this helpful. So now it's easier, right? They don't have to pass things past me multiple times. They know what I'm gonna say no on. Um, and then I won't get into this part, but um, our style guide also has a whole section on writing. So we have a, um, our voice and our tone and our writing style. We include all that up front here. And we're actually now working to combine, we have a couple other different style guides about like video content, how we want things to look for there. and. Um, what we will and won't put on the homepage of our website because we get requests all the time for, hey, you've got these feature blocks, can you put this thing? And we have guidelines for that. So we're really working to actually incorporate all of those things because they are kind of all part of our branding and how our um, marketing and things look to the public. So um, we're actually working right now to incorporate all of those different guides into one. So it's in one comprehensive document for everybody. Um, but that's, that's it. I didn't really have much to add, but just another experience for everybody. Um, kind of, again, similar to Kelly and Emmy, where we worked with a freelance designer. Um, but I really led the process with our team uh, within the library. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hollis. Are there any questions for Hollis about that? I can't even say how beautiful of a resource that is. And then when you said that you have video ones and uh, ones for like websites and stuff. Oof. When you're um, finished with those, we'd love to have those to share. Because that yeah, would be yeah. I appreciate you say. guys um, with the reminder about the Google Drive at the top of the meeting. I obviously have forgotten that that is a thing. So I, um, yes, once we have all of those condensed and combined um, and updated, because there's, again, like, her guide is different and our website, even though we did a, a big overhaul redesign in 2017, um, our digital services team is phenomenal and so talented. And so they continue tweaking things um, and just have continued to make really wonderful improvements for our website. So um, we have to update our web guidelines again. So um, that's a good thing, but we just wanna bring it all together into one space. So yes, I'm happy to share that when we've got it ready. 
Awesome. And then I know you also are going to talk a little about store funds. And then we also have Lisa. So I know that um, hopefully we can get through all of that in the next 15 minutes and people can keep throwing out questions in the chat. And you got SharePoint to work. So I'm going to drop my style guide in using SharePoint, which I can never get to work. So I didn't even try. Thank you, Hollis. I'll let you keep going. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and one of the questions that kind of keeps coming through is how much does some of this stuff cost? Do you have any uh, any sort of figure for that, Hollis? Yeah, ours was relatively affordable um, because we we worked even though we worked with a freelance designer, it wasn't like a comprehensive service. So she helped us in creating the logo and in. Um, I mean, I think I, I ended up writing most of the style guide, but she sort of put it together for us. And then she put together templates for like posters. And at the time we had web banners. So she made those for us um, and flyers. So she made some templates for us. And then she also redesigned our, our newsletter or our guide. So that was actually the most expensive part of it was that whole piece redesigned. Cause I think at the time it was, you know, 20 or 24 pages. So it was a big, um, it was a big piece, but that was a really important piece for us to make sure that that was um, where we wanted it to be with our brand standards. So I think um, her work without the guide, I'll separate that out. I think it was around $2,000. Um, she's wonderful and super affordable. Um, we maybe didn't go the best route in procuring a designer. Um, I was new to the organization and I had folks that I had worked with before that I thought would be a fit and had them each sort of give us proposals. Um, and ran those by administration and they picked one. So maybe not the best process, um, if I'm being honest, but she's wonderful. She has worked really closely with us and really gets our style. Um, she's not local, she's in Texas. So everything was over email or over the phone, but we're really happy with everything she's done for us. And we'll still go back to her for some projects. So um, like when we want to make signage for specific spaces within our building and we want that to have sort of its own I don't want to call it a logo, but it's kind of, it's like a stylized um, sign, right? Like we have workshop and it's got little gears on the O. Um, she'll create things like that for us. So then those are a separate cost each time we go back. But I would say like $2,000, $2,500 was all she charged us. She knew we were a public entity and um, we really sort of minimized her work as much as possible. And I took on as much as I could so that, you know, to keep that cost low. Awesome, thank you. Um, and uh, Tamara, let us know that we can go a little bit past noon. So even if you can't stay with us, anybody who's in the audience, um, just a reminder, this is being recorded. So if you have to, to bounce it at noon, um, you can always come back and catch that recording. Hollis, did you want to talk about store reference at all or do you want me to, to pass it over to Lisa? Oh, sure, I can keep going unless Lisa, if people need a break from me, <laughs> I to take a break. Totally okay. up to you. Okay, I'll, I'll dive in. Again, I'll be brief. I don't want to take up everybody's time, so I'll go ahead and um, share again here. Okay, so for our online shop, we uh, went with Threadless Artist Shops, um, and I have to pull up my notes. When Emmy asked me to share about this, I was like, oh boy, I'm going to have to really rethink what I did on this one. Um, so there's a lot of information if you head to this to their artist shops website and then go to the nonprofit section. Um, there's a lot of good basic information just on this page if you scroll down. And scrolling on Zoom always makes me a little nauseous, so I, I'm just going to leave it right there. But you can keep scrolling, and there's more. Um, we like Threadless because it's print on demand, so you don't have to manage inventory. That was always my thing. People were always asking me, we should have a shop. We should have shirts with our logo. And I was like, no, I'm not dealing with inventory. I'm not doing it, you guys. I've never worked in retail. I will screw it up. I'm no, but Threadless does that. So it was harder for me to say no. Um, they have a really simple online shop that is created for you. And I'll show you guys the back end dashboard a little bit. It's, it's very simple. Um, and then of course they handle the order of fulfillment and the shipping and the returns and the exchanges and it goes, you know, right to people's door. It's essentially an online shopping experience as far as the patron is concerned. Um, and then no hidden fees. So no startup cost and you only pay, and I, I mean, quote unquote, pay for what you sell. You, we don't pay anything, right? We are only making money. Um, so it's not like we're having to buy shirts and then sell them. Uh, at a markup. It's just that we we make the markup, right? So it's, it's, it's essentially free. We're only making money when we sell things. We don't have to pay anything out. Um, and I know I see there's chats already, but oh, okay. That's about Dropbox. Cool. Um, okay. So this 
is our, this is our online shop. Um, so this is sort of the end product after you get everything all set up. So we chose to keep things really simple. We have either um, colored products with our logo just in solid white, which is pretty standard branding for us to have our logo in white on a color. Um, I'm sorry for the scrolling. We, um, I made this quick little design of Love My Library, and then it's got our logo small underneath it. So we've got that with some options. And then somewhere we've got our logo with the color just on solid white only. Here's an example um, of our logo in white with the, with the color. Um, so at first we actually had a different setup. So their default setup is to give you what they call a collection with each of your designs. So when you first logged on to our shop, there were three items that you could see, something with a white logo, something with the gray and orange logo, and something with the Heart My Library logo. And I was getting feedback that people are like, why are there only three things in the store? And I had to be like, well, no, you have to click in and see. And people were not getting it, which is surprising to me because I feel like it's pretty, pretty simple. It's online shopping, but people weren't getting it. So we switched it. And now like just everything is here. You just <laughs> scroll through this homepage and you can see every product that we currently have in our shop. Um, but I also did start with a pretty limited selection. I know it looks like there's a lot here. They have so much more, like there's different kinds of t-shirts and long sleeve versus short sleeve and hoodie and you know kid sizes. And there's tons and tons of things available. So you can, you can really go crazy and have a lot of different stuff if you want to. Um, let me see, sorry. I'm trying to get back a page. There we go. Yeah. So this is the um, this is the back end. Oh, is it silk screen or digital? I think it's digital printing, Kelly, which I know is not everybody's preferred, right? Silk screen is better. Um, but the quality has been fine. I know you guys can't see my shirt. I've got my library threadless shirt on today. Um, we ordered a whole bunch of samples and we have little displays at each location because it is an online shop. We wanted to have something visual um, for people to see. So we've got like a little setup at each of our branches right now. Um, and everything has been good. I have not gotten any complaints about quality, which was one of my concerns going into. Um, yeah, so this is the behind the scenes. You can see right away on your dashboard, they tell you about your earnings with, which for us honestly, isn't that big of a deal. Um, and we haven't made a lot of money, but we go with their standard markups, which are pretty minimal. So um, it's, you know, three or four dollars per item that you're earning, but you can change that and adjust it. Um, I, I kind of feel like it's, it gets pricey if you add too much more of a markup, but it's totally your call. You can uh, set that up and make adjustments for it. Um, and then... So again, you can see like the, these are the designs that we have. And then as you dive into these things, that's where you can adjust what you have in your shop. Let me see. Ooh, here it comes. Okay. So if you scroll down, it'll give you the little check marks on what you have and that's your overview. But if you go like just into the men's section and this always takes a second because there's so much it shows you all the different choices available. So again, I don't want to do too much scrolling, but like just regular t-shirt. Here's a million colors to choose from. Here's the extra soft. Here's the classic. We do the tri blends. Here's the premium. So there's, there's so many choices available to you, plus all the different items in addition to t-shirts. Um, so it's, I think my only complaint is that I was a little overwhelmed on what to choose because there's so much here. Um, but they're, you know, they're adding more, they're constantly making updates and changes. Their customer service has been really great and really responsive. They have good FAQs and guides available to guide you through everything. Um, you know, like I asked, can you get custom promo codes? And that's a thing now. So that wasn't when we first launched just this fall and already you can create custom promo codes for your shop. So um, yeah, it's been, it's a pretty easy process, I think. And it's, uh, not been hugely popular, but we've definitely had some orders both from staff and patrons. Um, we pushed this really hard throughout the month of September for our 60th anniversary. 
And then um, my plan is to do other big promotional pushes, either when we decide to do promo codes, um, like we might do that for National Library Week, or I was even debating coming up for Library Giving Day, doing a little promo, um, and then when we add new items. So um, I know a lot of people have on their wish list, they'd really like for there to be a beanie <laughs> for the winter, but that's not an item right now. So if that ever comes available, we'll add that in um, and then make a big to-do, right? Like let people know there's a new item. Um, but that's, that's about it. Awesome, thank you so much. Are there any questions for Hollis about this? Okay. Awesome. Then Lisa, thank you so much, Alice, for talking. Mm -hmm. um, and Lisa, we're going to turn it over to you. All right. Well, thank you. Um, our project started as an advocacy issue. Um, we had a, it started last year in October of 2021. We knew we had some city council budget hearings coming up and we wanted our city council members to understand the value that their constituents placed on the library. Um, so we had people showing up at city council meetings and the t-shirts were seen as a way for them to advocate for the library. So we wanted, uh, like um, Hollis, I hate inventory. I hate trying to like match sizes to people. Um, so we were looking for an affordable way to pilot an online print on demand t-shirt store with no uh, upfront or ongoing costs. Um, and we looked a lot about other options because there are sure a lot of them out there, you know, there's Threadless, there's Zazzle, there's Bonfire, um, you, you name it, there's probably a good dozen of them out there. Um, a lot of them require a PayPal account for taking income from the site, and that is not possible under our city finance rules. So we needed a uh, company that would send us a check for uh, profits from the site. And so we ran across Raygun. And, Another library had purchased staff development shirts um, that said America needs libraries, or sorry, America needs librarians, which is actually a standard shirt for Raygun. If you don't know Raygun, they're uh, a quirky little company out of Iowa, and they're famous for their progressive ethics and their current topic responses and, and somewhat kind of a cheeky style. And I'm actually wearing one of our shirts, which is our Rock Island needs libraries shirts. So we took that America Needs Libraries slogan or America Needs Librarian slogan and switched it to Rock Island Needs Libraries to be more inclusive, um, to include all our support staff who are perhaps not MLS degree librarians or are not. Um, and they can, uh, Reagan can do a lot of things. Their stock shirt is all of this white text on a solid color and the blocky lettering. And that's the style they've become famous for. So again, we went with Rock Island Needs Libraries. Um, we've since added a band Books Week shirt, which I don't know how much of this you can see if I hold it up, but it says I read band books. Um, and we added that this year. Um, we, you can set your profit margin to be what you want it to be. We set $5 per shirt over the $15 ray gun cost. Um, and that is our goal was again advocacy to get as many shirts out there as possible and not necessarily fundraising, but you can set it at 10, you can do what you like. We wanted to keep it affordable. Um, we have sold 53 shirts out of our store since we started it. And so that's a profit margin of $265 to the library. Again, not huge amounts, but it, it makes it worth it, of course. Um, the Band Books Week shirt is probably responsible for about half the shirts we've sold. It's been very popular. Um, and so Raygun sets up a free site for us. And the free site comes with certain, legis uh, certain limitations. Um, and so we can have four different shirts out there. Um, there's a link to our store. Oh, that's a link to the sample store for Raygun. Um, if I can see if I can share my screen and share. There's our store. Um, and you can see we've got the hoodie, we've got the Rock Island Needs Libraries, this red and yellow shirt, they did this as a favor to us. That's our high school colors for the area. And that's a very popular color combination. Um, so there's that. This is the direct link to our store. Oh, it's there, but I'm gonna put it in chat too.
And so, yeah, so um, one, one of the things that was important to us is the, the business practices of the company that we were dealing with, at least it was important to me. Um, and so Ray Gun is union printed shirts in our area. We are a union library and we come from a union town and it's just, that's a very big thing for us. Um, we also, um, you know, we could choose between two different types of shirts. One was an internationally sourced but verified sweatshop free source with more colors and that would be in like a 60-40 blended shirt. Um, we could also choose to go with a USA only made shirt, but they're 100% cotton and there are fewer choices for colors. So we went with the internationally sourced shirt for our style. Um, the, uh, so again, there's a small mix of products. So that's kind of a, 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 a for, if you're looking for a huge store, that would be a detriment for you. For us, since we were just dipping our toes into it, it was not a problem for us. Um, but Raygun handles the design, the printing, the sourcing, the tagging, the invoicing, the processing, and the fulfillment. So it's just completely turnkey for us. And, and that was certainly a high factor. Um, and that Raygun handles the shipping. They ship it in their Raygun style envelope, which is a recyclable package that says words on an envelope. And that's it, the kind of style. Um, they run a monthly report, send us a check for what we owe. And so there's no inventory to manage. Um, you know, the prints need to be in one color for this free store and it's limited to the ray gun style. Um, now, they offer, also offer other options. And I saw the note in the chat that, you know, they're going to be coming and speak at a later time. So I won't spend a lot of time on that, but you do have options to other add other products from their line, which is everything from onesies and bibs and hoodies and tote bags and kitchen towels and coasters. So you can have in your store, whatever you want. Um, they have a Shopify site under the Ray Gun umbrella that where you have many more options for adding in different products, but there's a monthly cost for that. And so we opted out of that. Um, they can do set up and work with an existing outsource, uh, an existing outside store to handle production and shipping. Um, so there's all sorts of different ways they can go. Um, the secondary way we've done that and it's been working very well for us. We just had our 150th year kickoff and we put our staff in all of these shirts, which we did with a, a screen printer locally. Um, and that was one of those cases where I had to match people to shirts and, and handle that inventory. But since it was mostly for staff and board members and inside parties, I was, you know, okay with it. When we wore these at the party, everybody at the party was like, where can I get that shirt? I really want that shirt. And our staff members were like, I really want that in the long sleeve shirt. I really, really love it. So we are gonna go with a local screen printer to set up a short term uh, store where people can order these on demand and they will handle the shipping and, and fulfillment and all of that. Um, and so, that's probably where we'll go next with this. We're just getting that set up so I don't have anything to share on the screen. Um, but I've seen a lot of that locally. And then the, the benefit is we get to work with a company that is actually in our tax service area um, and work, you know, keep it local. So we'll see where that goes. We also are starting up a volunteer group and we're looking at probably setting up a store for them. Um, so we, we sort of use this as our pilot project to get comfortable with it and we may go in a different direction later. So any, I'm not looking at the chat. Are there any questions in chat here? Nothing that's come through, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute or drop them in the chat and we can uh, get those questions answered. I'm hoping I can stop sharing my screen here at some point. Um, I'm not seeing that as an option here. It's a tiny red button underneath. So if you go back up. Got it. Thank right. you. No thank problem. you. Thank you. So, yeah. So we've enjoyed working with Ray Gun, and it's been a really great relationship. And again, it was a right way, right for us at the time to just get started with a t-shirt store and again, to get that advocacy project out there. 
Thank you, Lisa. Like you mentioned, oh, we haven't locked down a date, but Ray Gunn, I've been in contact with them and they are hoping that we might be able to invite them to a future hybrid event where they would share a little more about storefronts, but also share a lot more, like you mentioned, they're sort of cheeky, fun, like share a lot more about um, just their company for creative inspiration, which is one of our goals for these hybrid events that we have coming up, that they'll be useful, but also inspirational. So yeah. we're excited. They've been really great in my email communications with them. And while they might not be local necessarily to Illinois, they're Midwestern. So yeah. And they are actually setting up a store in Davenport. So this is just across the river from us. So we're kind of excited about the ability to actually go into the store um, and possibly work with them on some other projects. And somebody asked earlier for Hollis whether they were silk screened and our shirts are silk screened, but you know, Raygun is got such a huge volume and since it's one color on on it's easy for them to switch that out um you know and again it is a a 50 percent poly 50 percent pre-shrunk cotton so it's a soft feeling shirt which we found is much more popular with staff and the public than a, a stiffer more cotton shirt Awesome. Um, they also have a store in Chicago in Andersonville, which is a fun store to go through. Well, that's sort of local then. Yeah. yeah they're fun, uh, they're the fun company. And they do, uh, again, they have these existing lines of America needs teachers and America needs librarians. So they really sort of fit in well with the, the library ethos. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you so much, Lisa, for that. And thank you to everybody else who presented today. Are there any last minute questions about anything that we talked about today? Or does anybody have any just burning questions about something that they may be working on and, and maybe need a little bit of help with something? That's one of the best things about this group is just idea sharing and, and trying to help everybody problem solve a little bit. If not, that's okay. Um, but if you have something that comes up, uh, always look to that Facebook group that we have, the ILA Marketing uh, Facebook group. And uh, be in touch with us too if you have any topics that you'd like to see talked about at one of these roundtables, or maybe there's a presenter out there that you'd like to hear from, or a topic that you'd like to hear from. Let Emmy know, let me know, um, let's Mara know, and we'll see what we can do to make it happen. Um, or if you'd like to be one of those host locations for a future hybrid event, let us know as well. You just need to kind of have the capability to be able to to do that. Um, but like I said, we we kind of like to take the show on the road and, and visit some of our, our libraries outside of the Chicago area that we maybe haven't been to before. Um, and so with that, unless anybody does have any questions, I'm not seeing anything in the chat and I'm not seeing any hands raised. So I think we're good to go for the day. Um, but again, just thank you to everybody who came and presented. And um, if you have any feedback, just let us know. All right. I think with that, we are good to go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.